Genesis 1-1 In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible starts with the God who is active. A God who creates. A God who works. It is interesting to use the phrase, God works. Does God really work? It might seem that work is beneath God. God wouldn't dirty his hands by working, would he? At times, our theological thoughts and ideas about God are so grand that we have trouble thinking about God doing anything. God's transcendence, otherworldliness, and holiness are so stressed that we cannot imagine God working. We think that real work would in some way diminish God's perfection. However, throughout Christian scripture, God is illustrated as an extremely active worker. This apparent contradiction does not come from a faulty definition of God, but from misconstrued ideas about work. Often when work is easy, we do not consider it work. Our concept of work includes descriptions such as hard, tiring, toilsome, time-consuming, exhausting, frustrating, boring, necessary, and required. With a concept of work that necessarily includes those things, it is not only hard to imagine God as working, but also it would be wrong. Nothing is hard for God. God never gets tired. God is never frustrated or bored. Nothing ever outside of God imposes requirements upon God. God has unlimited amounts of time and energy, so nothing can truly consume them. Work and God seem like mutually exclusive ideas. One has to change. But then Christian scriptures engage us as we encounter God. We hear about a God who creates, makes, shapes, forms. We read about a God who rests. We listen to God describe himself as a worker. Listen to some passages here with me. Some of these may be very familiar to you. Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. God frequently describes himself as a shepherd in scripture. Something about the job of being a shepherd communicates details about what God does and how God interacts with the world in a way that is good to describe God as a shepherd. Psalm 139, 13. For it was you who created my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. God describes how he forms and creates humanity, each one of us individually, through the phrases of a weaver or a knitter, through the act of making us into some sort of piece of fabric or clothing. Isaiah 1, 24 and 25. We actually get two metaphors in this one. Isaiah 1, 24 and 25 reads like this. Therefore, the Lord, the God of hosts, the mighty one of Israel declares, Ah, I will gain satisfaction against my foes. I will take a revenge against my enemies. I will turn my hand against you and will burn away your dross completely. I will remove all your impurities. God here uses the metaphor of a general in the army or someone who commands the Lord of hosts to describe how he engages the world and then goes on to use the metaphor of a smithy or a metal worker to describe how he works with individuals hearts and life's lives john 15 1 through 2 moving into the new testament jesus describes the father this way i am the true vine and my father is the vineyard keeper Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, he removes, and he prunes every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce more fruit. Jesus the Son describes God the Father through a work metaphor. The Trinity is okay talking about each other using these work metaphors. Romans 9.21 Or has the potter 
no right over his clay to make from the same lump one piece of pottery for honor and another for dishonor? God describes his interaction with humanity in the terms of being a potter and being able to make the clay into pottery. And then finally, 2 Timothy 4.1, before God and Christ Jesus, who is going to judge the living and the dead, and by his peering and his kingdom, I solemnly charge you. Here, the difference with this verse is there is no metaphor here. God isn't like a judge. God is a judge. So in scripture, we see God perfectly comfortable describing himself in work metaphors, but we also see God declaring that he does things that seem to be work in scripture. So if our definition of work seems to exclude God from doing it, yet God describes himself as a worker, then we might need to think about changing our definition of work. What would be a good definition of work that could include God as a worker?